G'day and welcome to the Conspiracy Podcast. My name's Josh Wade. On today's episode, I'm interviewing someone that a lot of you guys have been requesting for a long time, uh, Mark Orville, or better known as Angry Dad. I sat down with Mark at his house in Melbourne. Uh, we spoke about a plethora of things, sort of where he comes from in life. Uh, we talk about sort of his ambitions growing up, where he wanted to be, uh, what he wanted to do, what he does now. We spoke about um, a little bit about religion and the death of his father and how that affected his family and what he sort of took from that in his life. Uh, and then we just spoke about a bunch of other general shit. It's a really, really cool conversation and it's a great way uh, to get to know the guy because most of us just know him when he loses his fucking shit. And... Uh, He's actually, I honestly, like I've been lucky enough um, before this podcast to spend a bit of time with the family and um, they're some of the greatest people I've ever met. Really, really good people and I think you guys are going to, you're going to see that in that podcast. If you want to help us out on Patreon, uh, you can. Uh, we, we really appreciate your support and we need to thank everyone that's been helping us out. It's growing. The show's growing every day and Domino's is calling me now because I've got a fucking pizza on the way. <laughs> Hello? But yeah, thanks to everyone on Patreon. If you want to listen to the audio version of the podcast, you can on Android or on iTunes. The links will be down below. If you want to chat to me on Instagram, Twitter, or on any of the other places, the links will be down below. Give us a follow on Instagram. I need it because no one fucking likes me there anymore. I need help. Enjoy the rest of the show. G'day and welcome to the Conspiracy Podcast. My name's Josh Wade. Today's episode, Mr. Angry Dad, Mark Orville. How you going? Good. good. Josh, yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. We're, we've been chatting for a little bit. We were just chatting about um, some t-shirts. That you got from Jason at LKI. Parachutes, not parachutes. Parachutes, yeah. yeah. Parachutes, yeah, yeah. yeah. He actually, I was speaking to him on the phone yesterday and he mentioned that Dylan said uh, that they'd sent you some shirts recently in 3XL and, and, that, and that you didn't fit them. And they went and looked for some 4XL. He was actually, I was on the phone to him. He said, oh, I'll bring you, if we've got the 4XL here, I'll bring you one. You can present him. Yeah, I, I saw him actually up in the in the laundry sending some bed sheets up to him. <laughs> That's what he's actually going to do. Um, all right, so... Now, you've been, uh, I mean, you've had an interesting rise. We've had a lot of people, like, you're probably the most requested person to get on this fucking thing, because, I mean, you can talk some good shit. So, clearly, you don't know too many fucking people, then. <laughs> no, 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 I don't. No, my, my yeah. Um, when did this all start? I think it's almost three years ago now. Yeah. So, time flies. I can't say flies while you're having fun, but I think it's about three <laughs> years ago now. Yeah. Yeah, but this has been going on your whole life. It has, absolutely. But, yeah. you know, I think technology has changed it in terms of iPhones and the like, so you've got something to capture and, you know, relive the moment every day. Yeah. But prior to that, it was more just you got that point of time where something funny happened or they were annoying the fuck out of you and then it was over and done within five seconds. Yeah, yeah. Um, now I've spoke to the boys before about it and originally they just started putting the videos up on Snapchat and sending it to their friends on their normal, before yeah. it became like a, a, an actual thing. Um, now, do you, do you remember what the first one was that they'd put online? Oh, what no, they... it was just, you know, they'd walk past and give you a wet willy or whatever, a finger <laughs> in your ear or do something stupid yeah. while I'm trying to watch the news or, you know. Yeah. And then, yeah, it sort of just evolved from there. And it was Dylan's Collingwood mates that actually egged him on to the point where Mitchell then thought he'd be really creative and put a video uh, on Facebook and yeah. then fucking the rest of history, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. so um, what I was going to say was... was you're yeah. right. Hey, you're right, Dylan, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. But fucking hell, yeah, yeah. we'll just go, go fucking... We're going to cut here, mate. Well, there you go. What so, I was, so, 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 where's the respect? No, no, okay, well... This, this could have been a live CNN interview. <laughs> and we've got this little shithead in the background yeah. making as much noise as he can. Well, yeah, then you'd know if fucking CNN was real at that point, but it's fucking not. Um, so that's the interesting thing. So I get asked a lot because I've been lucky enough to stay here um, for a little bit Well, you were nearly sort of unlucky, but anyway. That's yeah, yeah, we'll, that's we'll go into that soon. Um, but a lot of people ask me, uh, you know, is it real and stuff like that? And, I'm, and I always say, like, I'm telling you, and these guys, Connor's been here for a little bit. Mate, what you see is what you get in this household. It's, there's no... Oh, it is, absolutely. No... And you know, I'm not going to sit here and even justify it, but that's what I would say to people. Anyone that knows me, what you see is what you get, and if you like it, you like it. If you don't, I don't really yeah. give a rat's ass. Yeah. And I mean, we're living in a, in a world online now where there's just so much, you know, fake shit, especially with pranks and stuff like that. You, people are trying to take it to the next level to the point where you're shitting on your mate or you're fucking <laughs> stuff like that, and, and it's all fake anyway. Um, do you, ever, do you ever think that they'll run out of ideas? Oh, I think it's sort of half imminent now, to be honest. I mean, they yeah. don't get a lot these days. 
I'm a bit sort of more of a wake up, and I think combination of that and the fact they're running out of things, yeah, um, it'll die a natural death. So, you know, <laughs> good on it. It starts with Mitchell moving out. He's out of here now. Yeah. So you will have seen the house is really fucking clean. Yeah. There's no dirty clothes <laughs> or anything. And the prick's not here to annoy me. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, I think it's almost run its race now, to be honest. Yeah. And they're both building, like, their their personal brands now as well going along. I mean, they want to do their, their own sort of shit. No. See, it's, it's a never-ending fucking... Yeah, Richo, he, he's fucking sick. He should be in bed. But he, anyway. he's, <laughs> he's not even fucking... What is it? He's... You're not even related to the bloke and you fucking... He's my love child. He's your love child. Yeah, that's... that's or are you related? Who knows? Is that the question? Yeah, maybe is that why he's here? Yeah, that's, maybe that's it. He hasn't yeah. told me yet. Long, long, long. <laughs> yeah, he's got my rig, so he can't tell <laughs> Just, I've got two of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, um, yeah, so they, they're getting into their own personal brands. But angry dad aside... You uh, you were involved in like advertising and stuff like that sort of before. Like, yeah. where does where do you come from outside of this world? Yeah, I've had a corporate life for thirty years, and that's yeah. sort of come to an end in December. And that's probably the thing that, um, in terms of this whole, all this shit, is is what's you know what what am I fucking looking for? So yeah, that's why I'm not in corporate any fucking longer. Mm. No, no, no. Um, you know, I've had a private life and a professional life mm. for that period of time. So. You know, I am like I am at home because I've got two shithead kids and, and I don't suffer fools. When I'm around nice people, I'm actually nice. I'm not mm. angry, I don't yell, I don't swear, but these dickheads just wind me up. So but yeah. yeah, that all finished, Josh, in December. So a bit of a um a bit of a change for me the last six months. I've had a little bit of a time off, but I'm now actually uh I've got involved in a wine business. Yep. So, you know, not my kidneys and my liver are really happy about that. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, that's the next venture for me. Yep, yeah. And and you're running that, are you? Oh, part owner. I've got, yep. got equity in it with yep. a good mate of mine and another couple of guys. And they've been in wine a long time. So, yeah. you know, they're taking me along for the ride and it's been good so far. I mean, it's early days, but... Yeah, have you heard of that Gary Vaynerchuk bloke? No. No, okay. He had this, like, thing on YouTube, Wine Library TV, and it was like, he was this first dude that, that did it, and it was sort of like every video, every day he'd make a video of him testing different types of wine. This is when YouTube put, sort of first started. Yep. And he just was working at his dad's liquor store and then sort of grew the liquor store out of just testing wines on YouTube each day and then made the first online wine store um, in good America. Idea. I mean, people are always after opinions. I mean, what's the difference between that and guys that sit back and play these new Nintendo games and all this? Yeah. You know, it's a reference point. So yeah. that's yeah. pretty clever, to be honest. I don't know the first thing about wines. No. So I'll be the last person to do that. For me, it's just about... You know, here's an opportunity. It's all about on premise, so you yep. know, bars, clubs, pubs, restaurants, and all yep. that. So, I've just got to get out there and um, get the product known and into as many venues as I can. Yeah. All right. So, what's it like? Because um, I've always wondered. You, you know, you've done Sunrise and Today, and then those sort of and Jack Cole and Jackie O and that a few times. Um, I mean, firstly, did you ever see yourself being on those shows? Because you know Koshy fucking loves you. Do you know the funny thing is, right? And this mm. this is going to sound really weird, but I was born in Hamilton, Western District, and I always had a thing for radio. Right. I worked part-time at the radio station at 14, 15. I used to actually go down and sit on a Saturday night with guys that – the, the, the hosts or DJs, announcers, right. call them what yeah, you yeah. like. Fuck and, wits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, one of them, Derek Gill, I remember him. I think he ended up on ABC or whatever. Anyway, right. um, that aside <laughs> – I actually admired what they did. Yeah. So I had a thing with radio. So never, ever pursued it, but I've got a good head for radio, so maybe <laughs> I should. But um, no, I, I wouldn't have thought that I'd ever been on there talking to those sort of people. It's been a, it's been a good little ride, to be honest. Yeah, it is. it has been a run. And I mean, that's what I was sort of mentioning just before we started is like, you know, the, the style of content that you're doing, you know, it's, it's no holds bar. You're not holding back. Like there's swearing and there's everything yeah. in it. Um, so to be embraced by mainstream media like that that's a that's actually a massive feat by by mitchell and dylan to get that up there to be able for them to look past yep. that and go morning television will beep out the words we still want to speak to you know yeah. you and guys you know, that's that's interesting because i've never really sort of taken much time to think of it in that perspective to well, be honest. won't but fucking touch me <laughs> but I'm telling, really is that right fucking you know the won't. thing is Odd, again, the whole radio thing, I reckon I'm probably too opinionated to spend too much time on it because, again, what you see is what you get. But mm. I reckon it'd be an interesting gig. Look at someone like Fev that's come off that. 
I'm a celebrity to get me out of here. Yeah. And being given opportunities, fantastic. Like, yeah. And he, you know, again with him, what you see is what you get. Yeah. So well, that's what I said to you before. You you, you should make a podcast because at the end of the day, no matter what you do, you're always going to find yourself getting into shit. And I don't know, but I'm guessing surely there's maybe been a video or two that you know that have, that's gone up and then everyone's gone oh fuck maybe there was something that was said in that video or maybe something happened in that video we go oh no that's probably you know people have given you shit for or something oh, like that and gone yeah. too far or yeah. whatever um but you're always going to get that that pushback now i've always found with the internet you'll always have something like when you guys start or and, and not just you but with anyone you start and you sort of you take off overnight it just sort of happens when when the time comes you the page just goes nuts and the videos go nuts but then that pendulum starts to yeah. swing back yep. and people start to get sick of seeing it in the news feed. Like yeah. I said, whether it's me, you, whatever. Did, when, did you ever go through the comments at all? Nah, look, occasionally I do. Surely you very, must have. No, nah, no, nah, I, I don't, to be honest, because, again, all it does is aggravate me. And I've seen yeah. a few things where people have screenshotted and sent through to me that's trying to wind me up, etc. And there's no point because mm. there's nothing to achieve out of it. Yeah. Really, there isn't. Um, no. I personally have only ever found one of the videos funny, and that's the the coin trick with the water. The rest of <laughs> yeah. it, like seriously, Mitchell, get a life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, fair thing. Yeah, fucking, you fell know. into that one. That was good. No, I, yeah, yeah, fell into. Well, you know, that was the first time he ever hid a camera. That's why. Right. Because prior to that, you know, he'd sort of have it sitting in front of him or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was early days. Yeah. But he'd put this in a pot plant. So, you know, he's just come walking out thinking that he's some sort of Houdini or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So he did get my attention yeah. and it was interesting for that second, but then bang, I should have known. Yeah. Prick. Well, talking about like shit people say, um, I mean, there's been a few times that I've seen, you know, you've, you've obviously Hannah and Sharon sometimes in the videos and they're a target. Yeah. Um, they're a target for people that just want to, you know, because they know it's a, it's a soft spot for everyone. They know yeah. you'll, yeah, you'll, family, get a, families, yeah. you'll get a fucking reaction yep. um, out of it. Um, there was a... Did someone message you? I don't know if you want to yeah, talk about this. Yeah, a couple of Saturday nights ago, some clown actually Snapchatted me about four or five times. And I should have ignored it. Just, I opened was it text or was it <laughs> no, video? No, it was a Snapchat video. Uh-huh. And... You know, again, it was late or early one morning, so it, I'd actually been out, so I should have ignored it. Yeah. But, you know, I, I actually took the bait and went back to him, and mm. then he just sort of escalated it three or four times. And I just thought, you know what? You can say what you like to me. I don't care. I'm sort mm. of thick-skinned. I can look after myself. But when you overstep the mark and you talk about your wife and your daughter and just a shitty said, I wouldn't even repeat it, but it was just wrong mm. on all respects. And he's just lucky he wasn't within arm's length, I can tell you now. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just, there's just no need for that. I mean, put shit and have your opinion and all that, but this seriously, with what he said, um, and clearly he knew that pretty quickly because he shut down his account and moved on and I had all these people wanting to help me hunt him down. And yeah, kill. I know. That's, I and that. that's not the whole purpose of it because i just like for him to explain to me why he thinks it's right to yeah. be able to say that um, as a keyboard warrior. Um, but yeah, I probably shouldn't have barked back, but he got me at the wrong time. Yeah, you got to be... Like, I've had things before I've thought... I've just gone, like, wanted to bark back and then... I mean, there was this fucking, when an iPhone was released, there was this fucking kid, this Australian bloke that was the first bloke to get the iPhone in the world and he took it out. I don't know if you remember it, but <laughs> no, he, dropped the, no. he dropped the phone on the news. <laughs> I do, I yeah, yeah. Right. And it went viral all I around do, the world. I do, I do remember. And I'm sitting in New York City at the time and I was on holiday and I'm, I wrote the status and I said, dear, the bloke that dropped his iPhone, suck shit, cunt, sincerely, the rest of Australia. Now, this bloke's seen it straight away. Like, I forget that. You know, and but I remember refreshing the page, and after two minutes, it had like ten thousand likes on it, and I went, "Fuck, yeah, this yeah, is going to go yeah. huge." I don't know if I really want it to go this big. I don't know. You know, yeah. that's that's scary when it goes that far. And he'd found it straight away. He just starts messaging me, going, "I'm about to be on Nine News. I'm going to call you out on the news and say that you're a bully, blah blah blah, <laughs> that that you're swearing at me that you've done this." And by this point. I've just shit myself and gone, oh, fuck, like what, you know, yeah. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I don't really want a media fucking witch hunt on me. Uh, but anyway, I ended up deleting it, which I never should have done because then he went back and said, I made Thanks you delete it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and I'm going to, you know, you're, you know, you deleted it. You knew you were wrong. Yeah, I've t yeah. And then he started tweeting out saying, I made Josh Wade delete. I just thought, you fucking slimy little yeah. cunt. See, oh. He would have seen leverage off that for himself. Personally. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the whole thing. Not that, there's often you don't get the opportunity to, but it's load brain before you shoot mouth. Mm. 
when it comes to sort of responding to people's yeah. opinions and comments and this sort of shit. But again, at different times, it's easier said than done. Yeah, and and I, I sort of the reason that that I deleted it was I actually thought to myself because we I think in general society forgets that you know this guy's probably messaged you. And, you know, when you've barked back, he's probably, it's clicked in, that, oh, fuck, this is a real person. Yeah, yeah. We forget that. Yeah. I forgot no, that no, that kid's a real person. Absolutely, yeah. And if I saw a status online about me and within two minutes that it had, had 10,000 likes at, directed at me saying, yeah. suck shit, cunt, and I've got all these people commenting, ha, 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 ha. I mean, that is, that, that'd be hard to take in. I can take it in yeah, because I'm yeah. used to yeah, yeah, yeah. comments and that, but he's just not, be yeah. a random dude yeah. that's on the news and drop your iPhone and then, yeah. you know, you got... I, I reckon, you know... If it's about race, religion, and those types of sexuality, etc., mm. you know, you've always got to be a little bit careful with what you say because there's so many people have strong opinions mm. about it. Mm. But you know, again, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I think it's, how, it's how you actually articulate what you want to say. Basically. Yeah, I think so. Like I say that about Pauline Hanson. I say like, like some of the issues that she talks about are actually legitimate things that, that are on people's mind. Yeah, That's why she's there, but she's not the yeah, right person, person to articulate. be addressed. Yeah, she can't articulate shit. But I also think, when talking about opinions, I think everyone should have and say their opinion because I reckon common sense will prevail. Like the idiots will be fucking dragged out. And Do you think people are... Because I know you're not shy to share an opinion on something. You're happy to let people know where you stand. Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you think people oh, should be more like that? 100%, absolutely. But, you know, again, you don't have to say too much to get absolutely whacked these days, regardless of mm. what you say or what you don't say. Um, mm. is it ironic you talk about, you know, Pauline Hanson and the like. I've been wondering what that word plebiscite means because it sounds mm. so much like a parasite. But mm. <laughs> is it co mm. coincidental that mm. it's all to do with politicians? That's yeah. what a parasite is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, fucking <laughs> oath it is. Um, you like a bit of, I mean... I've stayed here maybe twice and the, the last time I stayed, I stayed here for about a week. So I got to sort of see the inner workings of, of the family. Well, then you uh, know better than anyone in terms of, you know, the dynamic here. It's yeah. just a crazy household Yeah, and how it works. But it functions. It yeah, functions fine. Yeah. It's not like it's fucking dysfunctional. Um, it it's, can be. <laughs> it's, uh, but you, I, I see you, you like a bit of a current affair. I like the news. I absolutely yeah, I sit down. I watch whatever, you, as, long, as many as many pieces of news as I can. Yeah, I know. Because and you'll even get on Snapchat and, and uh, Instagram, and, and you'll almost give your commentary to a story that's happening at the time. Why isn't that a fucking? Why isn't that something you go down? And just go. Uh, I'm happy to be guided by you. Seriously, <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know. There's different things that I see, and I think, oh my god, father. Again, look at Channel Nine the other day when that. Um, is it Amber? The newsreader that got caught a while ago abusing wardrobe, the fact the, someone yeah. had the same Did she do on. something else, did she? Uh, Sheila, she was interviewing, so split screen, uh -huh. actually, and then there was Peter Overton, I think, but one of the girls had the same colour on, and I said, oh, and I just, I couldn't resist. I sort of uh, filmed it and said, fucking wardrobe, you better get out <laughs> here quickly, because she's got the same colour on, but she wouldn't have been game to say anything. Nah. But... You know those sort of things. I sort of half can't help myself. Yeah, but I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's a career out of doing that sort of oh, shit. Oh mate, but there's a fucking career for anything on the internet. You could fucking put bloody horse tails up your <laughs> ass and then make money from it because people are into that. So, yeah. um, so I guess what what happens when you know if you, if you say this is coming to an end, let's say in the next three years that the boys eventually go, all right, we're moving on for something else, whether they want to keep going down the road of social media or if they, you know, find something else that they enjoy and, and follow that. Where do you see, you know, once everyone moves out as well, when I mean, the kids are going to eventually... Stop trying to cheer me up, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, you know, it's inevitable and that, that suits me fine. Yeah. Now, and I think this next chapter involved in the wine um, yeah. is what I'm going to do to keep me busy until I retire and at that point then we can just do a bit of travel. I'm nearly 50, so next year, 50. Yeah. Oh, it's a big five. So it's a big milestone. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. all the pricks are gone by then. <laughs> yeah. And I can no. have a party without them. I don't think so, mate. I don't think yeah. so. Now, we've got a couple of little ventures, and it's really not the whole angry dad. Well, one sort of. Are is. you going to. Is that going to still remain a thing? Whether it's. Well, that's purely side. up to the boys, because I have no say in any of it anyway. And, you know. But as much as you don't like it, it's your personal brand. It's you. Yeah. People I get, want I get you. That. Yeah, I get that, but I can't get a free fucking t shirt. Oh, actually, no, LK, I'll give me a free t shirt. Because they don't make them fucking. <laughs> <laughs> But I get nothing for free. Every time the door knocks or the doorbell goes, I go running to the door and it's Australia Post. Is Chloe here or Hannah here or Mitchell yeah. here? Or do Where the fuck's mine? Even when I bought something off Instagram, off um, Facebook a few weeks ago, you know, the um, 
Legends are born in March 1960. Oh, yeah, 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 and I copped yeah. a lot of shit over that from Mitchell saying, you know, you, you get sucked in by that shit. I had to ring the bastards 10 times and say, I've paid 80 bucks. Where is it? I oh, paid for it and I still can't get it overnight. Yeah. So no. that's how much luck I have. Right. Jeez, they, they've done well with getting some good shit. I mean, Mitchell's always got the clothes. It's, con- and that. it's constant here. Uh, seriously, now Mitch and Chloe have shifted out. I yeah. think they've diverted majority of what goes to them now. Yeah. But we would have anywhere from, I don't know, three to 10, 15 deliveries a day. To the extent where the guy, one of the guys, Steve, you know, we give him something to eat yeah. and a drink every time, and oh. he sees us up the street, and we, he'll give it to us there rather than come here. Right? <laughs> it's, it's wow. Crazy. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so because so that, Australia Post, we deliver. They fucking deliver. Right? They fly <laughs> around fucking Mount Waverley delivering. That, so you got so you, yourself, but you reckon you get fucking nothing. But then Dylan, Mitchell, and Chloe. I mean that, and then Hannah as well. Oh, maybe Sharon's had some collaboration. Yeah, Sharon, to play. Sharon does some stuff as well. So it's a house like that's that's an oddity in itself. It's is crazy, a house isn't it? full of that. It's odd just to have one person in the family, but you've all got your own social following. Like yeah, you've yeah. got people that might follow Sharon, but don't follow you, or you know, vice versa. It's all over the place. Where do you reckon? Um, in all seriousness, where do you, where do you reckon? Mitchell's going to go with it. Where does he yeah, want I to don't go? Because you know, he I posts was, some funny stuff. Yeah, and you know, it's, what's crazy is if you look at some of his personal Facebook stuff, yeah. he's had 150,000 plus likes on some personal Facebook yeah. comments and shit that he yeah. uploads. So I, I think it comes down to what he wants to do and how driven he is. He's a lazy little prick, right? So things don't just happen, and you know that. So right? am I, though, but they still do. It's, it's like a laziness, but it's still a. Yeah, well, yeah, and you know... It takes a certain person to be able to do it. It does, but he might be content with just getting free T-shirts every week and Mm. entry into a nightclub and an appearance here, there and everywhere. Or does he want to turn it into something? And, you know, that's purely up to him. And it's the same with Hannah. It's the same with Dylan. Yeah. Um, Who knows? Only time will tell. But we have actually, as a collective, got a little thing that's underway at the moment. I can't say too much about Uh it now, but watch this space and I'll give you the heads up in about... Three months, etc. Yeah, yeah. Actual heads. You Actual fucking, heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm heads. You're, you're doing an ISIS beheading, are you? <laughs> no, yeah, that's after. Angry dad no, does no, ISIS. Um, no, we're building an app. So again, it's nothing. We're building a an app. An app. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, everyone in this day and age builds a fucking app. Yeah, Let's yeah. not kid ourselves. But I reckon we got something a little bit different and unique. Yeah. You're not nothing to do with the whole angry dad side of things. Clearly, they'll use the audience to call out to of them course. to say, "Here it is." That'll be the extent of it. Yeah. Then the audience can choose whether. You know, it's for them or not. But watch this space. I'll give you the heads mm. up when it's about to, mm. to launch and um, yeah, tell you a bit more about it. Well, it's interesting because me and Connor were talking about Jules Lund doing the yeah. tribe thing. Yep. And and I was on the flight just reading one of the articles that he had about just Instagram posts and Connor goes, Jules Lund, what the fuck's he doing? I said, mate. He's done really well with He's tribe, done yeah. extremely yeah. well. I said, you don't need radio at all. That no. guy's switched on. It's all shit. He got in really early, which was good because mm. there's a lot of them around now. And Fine. I think... You know, his name's helped him get it to the next level. He's mm. got, you know, interest in the UK now where he's launching it into a second big market, etc. Oh, so good yeah. on him, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Let's go. Let's go a bit more personal. Let's go deep. Are you... Uh are you a religious man? Are you? Yeah. How, how, where do you see yourself on I a I remember spectrum? mum and dad saying, actually, because I'm Catholic, it was mm-hmm. like, I'm so a little much, Catholic, but I don't swear, bugger, bugger, bitch, bum, I don't care. Now, isn't that funny how that's the only thing I remember about religion? Never yeah. went to church. And yeah. I, I, you know what? People can have their own opinion around religion. I don't really follow it, care about it, have yeah. much of an opinion myself on it. So it's next topic. You know, when if it ever comes up, I don't, I don't contribute to discussions yeah. around religion. No, you know, no. I just, you know, I don't have the... Um, I don't have the nous to support whatever I want to say anyway, so I just go and get another beer. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, because it is a topic that divides people. Same with politics and everything. Um, We try and come from just sort of an open angle on this thing, because I don't really... I love talking about shit, but I I never really try and... Sort of delve too much? Well, uh, no, we we delve a (laughs) fucking lot, but I'll never subscribe to anything, because I've always said, like, you know, um, I'm attracted to conspiracy theories and all these different things, but at the same time, I go, well, fuck, there's... There's evidence to, to support any argument yeah, you fucking right, want in the world. Yeah. So it's more about just the, oh, what if it's this? What if it's that? What if it's this? Um, what do you reckon? What, where do you reckon you're going to go when you die? If you're not really connected to religion, how yeah, do you I, see that part? I agree 100%. And I feel I, it, that's a little bit topical because, you know, we buried dad just over 12 months yeah, ago. Yeah, I was going to go a, into it, that. It was like a, hang on, you know, now he's there. Fuck, you know, what does it really mean? And, you know, you talk to different people and they go, well, no, he's not. He's up there now and all this sort of shit. I don't know. But I reckon. 
and I've considered it myself, you know, as I start and get close to 140 kilos, yeah. it could be me next, that I think I want to be cremated. Yeah. yeah They're not going to haunt that. the little bastards and yeah. 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 It's conditional upon that it's strapped to, half of me is strapped to each of their backs. And I can <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be fucking Inject good? I'd come it. out every yeah. now and then just slap <laughs> <on> <laughs> Do you reckon? Do you reckon? Do you feel your dad around? Do you reckon there's is there ever ever moments where you go like maybe you'll be out somewhere and a song might play or yeah, something might happen? 100%. And you go, fuck that song, Kenny. That's is something. Is that a signal from somewhere? Yeah, I reckon. You know that song, Ed Sheeran photograph was because uh-huh. uh, I, I did a few trips back and forth when he was sort of dying. Yeah, and I pretty much just blasted that out the whole way between here and Port Ferry, and for some reason now whenever I'm sort of having those moments or whatever. It comes on. Yeah. And it's like, hang on, that's a bit too spooky. Yeah. So I, I, I do, yeah. I yeah, do. it's got to be a little thing. I, I notice it with myself, but I was here and he was here and your mum was here and, um, you know, he, he was fine. He was lively and, and that, but I think there was one moment where he went to the toilet, he was coughing a little bit and, yeah, he was, and he was he a was little bit worried bit. about... Yeah, he was sick for a bit just with... You know, liver and kidneys and all that sort of stuff. But he went downhill really quick. That was what yeah. we sort of... We didn't, we didn't really have a lot of time to prepare. And I remember when I ran... Well, this is spooky. I'd sort of planned to have a sickie. I just felt that I, I need to go and see him. And oh. I rang mum when I left work and she said, I was going to ring you because dad's in hospital. And I said, oh, shit, why didn't you ring me? She said, oh, look, I didn't want to worry you and all that. So I jumped mm. in the car and went down there. And I remember walking into the hospital and he rolled over. And he just said to me, he goes, oh, what are you doing here? And I said, i am come to see you. And he goes... This is it. I go, oh, fuck off. Like, you look fine. You're clearly something's wrong, <laughs> yeah. right? But, you, you, yeah. but you'll be right. And he goes, I'm telling you, this is it. And then it was exactly seven days later he died. And what was it from exactly? Uh, he, you know? he, it was just purely heart failure in the end, but yeah. it was all to do with his um, kidneys. His kidneys gave way, basically. Right. Fuck, he was funny. Oh, fair dinkum. Mate, you talk about, you know, as he was dying, you know, so these are good memories. Yeah. You know, he was struggling a bit on the last night. And I was sort of trying to help him. He was trying to get out of bed. He couldn't get out of bed. And I said, Dad, just don't move. It's all right. You know, you know it's, it's me. You know it's yeah. you. And he goes, yeah, I know it's you, you little fuckhead. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I, I remember sitting there and listening to his talk and going, you're, you're, you're fucking your father's son, aren't you? You're fucking oh, two peas in a pot. Oh, look, some of my dad's saying, when I got engaged, he said, just because you're thirsty, don't buy a pub. <laughs> yeah, his opinion on foreskins were don't get them cut off he goes wear the bastard off <laughs> <laughs> so you know I suppose when I look back on it now he actually was funnier than we actually thought at the time or what we, we you know that we gave him credit for yeah, but he, yeah. he had some lines don't worry about yeah. that he was, he was actually pretty funny yeah and that seemed to be like a um, won't harp on it too much longer but it was obviously a massive um I don't know, kicking the fucking nuts because, you know, you, you're quite a close family even though, you know, you see all the crazy dysfunctional side but really deep down what what makes it so easy to be dysfunctional and still function is everyone's still so yeah. connected. Oh, well, you know, again, I left home at 16 so I think for, as far as mum and dad's concerned there was a lot of my growing up they didn't see although I don't know if I've actually grown up to be honest but, you know, that, that, I think that sort of never really sat that well with dad to be honest because, right. you know, 16 is pretty young your balls haven't even dropped pretty yeah. much and then yeah. you've moved out and you never go home. Yeah, that's so it. then he would see me in the footy environment initially for a few years yeah. and then it turned into family so... <clears throat> You know, you start having kids and that, you know, doesn't really allow you to travel to the country much. Yeah. So you don't see a lot of each other, etc. I don't know. We had some, re- we had a couple of really good chats while he was dying, just about, you know, life and disappointment versus regret, etc. Mm. which is, you know, something that I've sort of, probably one of the only key things I've tried to drill into the boys about life is disappointment versus regret. Everyone's got disappointment, but just, you know, try and minimise the regret. Yeah, yeah, that's a really interesting way of looking at it. Well, it is. I mean, you know, I, I I'd can, rather be disappointed that you didn't. That Everyone's you didn't got disappointment it. in their life, but the regret is about you're not having the drive or seizing the mm. moment or the opportunity. And mm. my footy career is a classic example of that. Or well, you know, yeah. between me and Bobby Skilton, we got three rounds. <laughs> he's fucking got the three of them. But yeah, no, no, you know, seven years I tried my guts out, played yeah. seven goals, had more operations than fucking games. <laughs> but you know, I left it thinking. You know, I tried absolutely everything, so I have absolutely no one regret. Yeah. Massive disappointment, although I did get named in the Collingwood Footy Club Colt Pies team. No, did I, did, I did see that. So yeah. how's that, hey? Yeah, I'll, I'll be in any team with Phil Carmen and Darren Malone. Yeah. I don't care what yeah. it is. So, so were you playing 
footy growing always growing up like yeah yeah yes. and then when did it when did you go when did it click you went fuck i'm gonna actually take this real serious and try well and get it. you know back in those days so sort of mid 80s <clears throat> the way it worked was country had zones and we were zoned to collingwood so they yeah. kept an eye uh, on young talent coming through yeah, yeah and they had a junior and a senior list so yeah. i was on that at about 15 right so they wanted to get me down here and as soon as i got a job that was mum's absolutely must you've got to have a job yeah so i pulled out of school at the end of form five yeah and got a job with telecom to come down here purely to play footy so yeah. I, you know that's that whole thing about that was going to be my life I, you know i wanted to be fucking a brown low medalist and playing premierships this that and the other but you know after a couple of years i realized that because of the injury it wasn't going to fucking happen yeah is what's that what's that like because like for me i've <coughs> what i'm doing now is everything that i've wanted to do and then i've still got goals above that and if someone told me tomorrow that you just, you know, you, you, you're there, you, you're at the point, you, you know, you're good enough, but you, you're not yeah, good enough something's and, holding, and you back, something's yeah. holding you back and you're not going to be able to, you, you're going to have to make a decision to. I reckon <clears throat> what made it easy was back in those days, you had to work. Footy wasn't mm. a permanent thing, right? Yeah. So you had to work. So you had time outside of footy and that was a career. So luckily, these days it's a lot harder for the young kids because they come into the system, make 200,000 first yeah. year, 150, 180, whatever is decent money yeah. at yeah. 18. Then when they're 19, 20, 21, 22, they go, oh, sorry, mate, you're out. We don't need you anymore. They've had no chance to actually look at a career. And, even if, and they're not too old to do that. But to then go out and do it and start on 45 and 50 yeah, grand, yeah. There's going to be a massive bow wave effect here, and I don't give a shit. Like being a stripper. 100%, absolutely. There's going to be a massive bow wave. I don't care what the AFL think in terms of the effort and the money they're putting into it. <clears throat> they're not doing it good enough. And we can see that already with how many players. Even this year, you've had for Solo, you've had Cloak. Um, you know, there's been some well-publicised ones that yeah. are dealing with all these things, let alone the ones we don't hear about. It's going to be a massive issue. What about your Ben Cousins and stuff like that? Like that's just, that's a heartbreaking. It's very easy to make a joke about that, but we had an ice addict on this show maybe two weeks ago, and you you sort of forget again that they're real people, and yeah. you speak to them, and then you go, "Holy shit, man! This guy's had uh, a life that you know fucking kids could dream of, and then yeah, a no. life that's a fucking <clears throat> nightmare at the same time, and yeah. the rug just fucking pulled out." Straight and he's me. one that succeeded, that made plenty of money, that he may no longer have, not sure. And if you believe everything you read, you know, he's lost a lot of it. Yeah. Imagine the ones that just haven't had that opportunity, but their dream is to do it. And it, the, the rug gets pulled from underneath yeah. them and how they deal with it mentally and physically. Yeah. Uh, seriously, in the next 5, 10, 15 years, is a huge bow wave. And I don't think they understand it one bit. No. It's mass- it'll be massive. It'll be no. massive. And I think the other thing is, is like just just young people in general. I know when I was eighteen and started touring and stuff like that, I was making money that my parents weren't making together. Yeah. Fucking don't have it anymore. It's yeah. gone because yep. I didn't have any. I just didn't have any understanding of how that works. So how can you, how can you take someone in that's extremely talented, like a, a footy player, give them all this money, but then at the same time, do you know if they are they teaching them like life skills? Because I don't oh, even know how to pay tax. Look, they, I think they all sort of try and pretend that they do. Okay. But I reckon it's sort of token effort. So they can yeah. tick a box to say, yeah, we've actually said to them, you can attend this course and you can do this mm. and fucking move on next. But they're all only worried about their on-field performance. Yeah. And yeah. that's, you know, again, that's my opinion. And um, you know, I talk to a lot of different players um, at different times. I just reckon they've got massive issues. Yeah. And that's not to focus on the negative because they do a lot of things right as well. Mm. But that's going to be a big issue for them in, in going forward, I reckon. What about the big players that, that are making the ridiculous money now? And I, I'm, I, I only really know rugby league because I grew up in Queensland, but Jason, and, and I don't know about yourself, but Jason fucking hates rugby league. It's the worst game in the fucking world. Yeah, I but don't people understand like, it. No, well, people like <laughs> Jonathan Thurston and stuff like that. Oh, you know, they're I making him. Cause I, you, those, those... What happens when it's over? What happens when... Oh, they've been smart enough, those guys. I think someone's taken them under their wing. Yeah. And just sort of given good guidance yeah. and sort of help shape with you know decisions and all that sort of yeah. shit. But I think they're almost mm. the exception. You know, those and that's the issue for I think all of those big codes where people earn a lot of money. Mm. Because only so many of them can move into media because there's not 500 media roles for everyone to slot into. Then it becomes a choice for media companies to say, right, in terms of the talent pool, we'll take him and him and you piss off. Yeah. So there's an element of reality that kicks in for all of them too. And mm-hmm. I'm, sh- I'm tipping there as nervous as dog shit and razor blades every year 
This year, Rewalt comes out, right? He's going to finish. He'll go straight yeah. into the media. Yeah. Bucks, if he finishes at Collingwood, he'll go straight into the media, is my view, opinion. So they're going to have to make either room for them, they're going to increase the talent pool, which increases their costs, yeah. or someone has to go. Someone has to go, yeah. And that's typically what happens. So they'll, they'll you know, yeah. no one's ever immune from it. No, no. One. no. It's, it's, but some of them fucking just... Like, I don't know if you know much about Darren Lockyer, but I don't know how that guy got a job on TV because he's fucking, he actually, someone fucking, he, I don't know, how yeah. did it happen? Did it someone punch him in the throat? It was an incident on ground. I think he got, his, he got yeah. whacked in there. Yeah. yeah, and now he's fucking commentating the, the, yeah. like the grand final and everything like that. And I just think, I watch that and think, mate, if you can do that, then the fucking world's my oyster. But see that, again, what shaped the opportunity for him was his on-field performance. He yeah, he's a superstar he's a player. Everyone mm. knew him. And Fuck he attracts he an audience and that's what the media comes yeah. and TV stations want. Yeah. Simple as that. What happens with the older dudes? Like, yeah, um, you know, like, what's his name? Fucking Sam, Sam, Newman. Sam Newman. And then you've got Paul Vaughton. And these people that, yeah, I mean, but they've, they've been on these shows for so long now. And, you know, people are eventually going to out. Yeah, I, out think Sam, I don't think Sam would give two hoots, to be honest. I don't know him, never met him, but he's 72 or 73, whatever. Are you he's, kidding? Yeah, he's amazing for his age, isn't he? He looks unbelievable. Fuck, he looks like... 50 no no he's 72 or 3 or something get the fuck and he's made that much money that he could finish tomorrow and he wouldn't give a shit yeah yeah he's done really really well but again he's he's an exception I think there's lots of them that are made decent I reckon Brayshaw's one that comes to mind now when you look at that to go okay so the footy show hosting yeah um he lost I think his whole gig at channel 9 he's now just got triple m what's that done to not only his pay packet but his ego yeah. Because, you know, that's a, a bitter pill to swallow. Oh, fucking oath it is. So, yeah. yeah. It's like, I, I often think about, you know, Rove. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, Rove, the difference for him, and a lot of people may or may not know it, but, mm. you know, in terms of your on-camera talent, he's got production companies and all that. So behind yeah. the scenes, that underpins what he does. Yeah. So he doesn't rely purely, you know, the on-camera or on-radio yeah. talent sort of stuff because yeah. everything else... I mean, he runs the project he's been so and then clever. Yeah, licensed he's been, all out to New absolutely. Zealand. Absolutely, he's been so clever. But with at the same <laughs> time, Rove had... Because I used to watch Rove growing up and I thought that's that's exactly what I want to do. That's, yep. that's where I want to be. Um, and then he ended the show... Uh, which I which sort of just came out of nowhere. It was sort he of like the US, didn't he? Wanted the bigger market. Wanted, wanted a bigger market there, and and they were putting him on Jay Leno, and they were really they were setting him up to sort of be an Australian, I suppose. I don't know. You know, you've got the fucking talk shows now with that James Court and the British yeah, dude and everything. Yep. I think that's the sort of market that he wanted to head to, and he ended up getting a TV show that was produced by Steve Carell, and it ended up being on the debut episode. It was the lowest rated show ever on American television. And that basically, I think, what I'm guessing is, just even though it's not his fault, just would have. No one's indispensable, are they? I mean, look locally, even you look at SCN. What they got? Lyon, Hamish McLaughlin, and Timmy Watson. I think mm. apparently they're paying them. Again, if you believe everything you read, one and a half million bucks mm. to you know host the Brecky Show, and their ratings have been atrocious. So the SENs and all that of this world, they'll make excuses for a period. But mm. then at some point, commercial reality kicks in and they go, we're going to have to change it up. I mean, Rove, it happened they, with Rove and Sam Frost in yeah. Sydney. But you could, I could see that happening from the start. As soon as they signed it, I went, yeah, Rove, that's great. And he could, there is a chance with him, what the fuck's this? Nothing against this Sam girl. Yeah. But I, I think that was a quick grab to try and bring some eyes in from some stupid fucking TV show. <laughs> I agree, mate. Uh, that they were only like going to replace her next year. It's like saying a fucking good footballer is going to make a good coach. Mm. Yeah. Someone good on TV won't necessarily make a good Trends person on radio. Sam, <coughs> she did work. She worked well on radio, but I just. Yeah, I look, they, I think they did an interview with Mitchell once. And yeah, I, 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 you've got to be pretty smart to, to do those roles and do them well. I mean, they introduced Mitchell as Mitchell Overall or something. So you know how you get, you fucking lose them straight away. Straight from away. Yeah. yeah. Mitchell and Overall. It's like, is this fucking, like, who's this, Samantha fucking Freezer or Frog? Yeah, you know, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. It, it, I mean, people make mistakes. Let's not kid ourselves, yeah. but fuck, man, you've got, got, you got to do a little bit of research. Yeah, yeah, I've had that a few times, and, and we try and make sure that we, you know, anyone that I interview, I'll, I'll always know. I want to know things that they don't expect me to know about or remember. Comedians, but comedians are different, I reckon, because you've got the immediate opportunity. If you can actually throw it to something, make it funny, and people forget about it. When you're trying to be serious on breakfast radio mm. and you fuck up, you fuck up. Yeah, you do. And people go, oh, listen to that dickhead. I like Kyle. I want to get Kyle call, on hey, the uh, show. Kyle's an f- absolute ripper. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I've met him a few times um, through the boys' involvement with that. 
and he's a ripper. I noticed in the paper today he's calling out to Eddie Maguire. He's 135 kilos. He wants to lose weight. I'm 135 kilos. Maybe Kyle and I should have a fucking weight off. Who can, who can lose the most weight? Imagine the content out of the gym with well, me. They're spewing, going, fuck off. I can't do this. Well, you si- you guys are signed with, you know, you're putting stuff out with Kiss, and that was sort of, that's a, that's a, I wouldn't say a big risk, but they were sort of the first ones in the landscape to go, all right, let's, let's get these internet guys to, mm. to post on our platform. Yep. No one else is doing that. Yeah. And still, no one, that no one else is doing that. Um, so that's, that's definitely good inroads. But um, what was I going to say? Have you ever thought about doing, like, I'm sure you've been approached with it, but like getting on stage and doing stand-up? Because without sucking your ass, you, you're quite funny no. and you improvise quite well. No, I haven't because... You know, again, it's not the first thing that comes to mind that I'm actually you funny, funny to, to fucking look at. But okay, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You know, again, um, I've sort of it sounds weird, but I've sort of just sat in the background of all of this, and and you know, the boys now think they're fucking rock stars and all <laughs> that sort of shit. But I haven't thought twice about any of it now. Yeah, okay. Nothing's really jumped out. We did sign to do a reality TV show yeah, early that. on, mm. and that was with Matchbox. I don't know what happened. There was. Um, some a couple of the stations were looking at it. They committed to do it, and then they pulled out. Whatever. We didn't even really follow up and say what happened. The agreement ran out, and we just moved on. Yeah. I, and I'm not saying that would have been the right thing to do or the best thing to do, but there was a bit of activity earlier. You know, it's all sort of died down, and, and I reckon that's purely because people were probably thinking it's run its race, and I'm happy with that. But <laughs> do I do anything? I don't know, mate. I'm happy to. Once we wind this would, up, I'm would happy you to do it. Oh, I don't know. I reckon I. I don't know if I'd be that good at it. I mean, I went to well, a footy... fucking pull your head in. You're never going to know if you don't do it. <laughs> I went it. to a footy... I went to a footy... Jakey King from Richmond played okay. on the weekend and yeah. I, I promised a friend of mine, ex-Collingwood boy, that I'd go... Um, mate, that I'd go and have a chat to the ladies' yeah. lunch there. And um, <laughs> I reckon that went all right. I yeah. know, and it wasn't... Nothing was... I had no idea what the questions were, what I needed to say, whatever. I sort of ad-libbed that one, got through it okay. Yeah, you so. can't... You can ad-lib very, very well. And it's a talent that, you know... I reckon I ad lib very well, but I wouldn't have realised until doing this and then watching other com- comedians and going, oh, I, that's my main talent in stand-up comedy is coming up with shit on the spot and be yeah. able, being able to react to something really It's rolling quick. with the punches, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, and maybe there we go. Let's call that to Kyle and Jackie. Maybe they should give me a spot. You know, they did Kyle... Bieber, Bieber Island. <laughs> yeah. No? What's that? Oh, they fucking hide out some island and when Justin Bieber came, they had him perform there. We should do AD Island. <laughs> Have a bunch of fucking 16-year-old oh, girls know, screaming. I, do you know what I get fucking contacted about the most is that I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. People people saying you have should... Have they contacted you? No, I think they talked to someone late last year, but they've never contacted me directly. But mm. um, people saying to me, you know what, you're a fat prick, go on that. If nothing else, at least you'll be funny and you lose some weight. <laughs> and I'm thinking, fuck it up. If someone pays me to lose some weight, maybe it's not a bad thing. Nah, it'd be. I reckon it'd be a good experience. You know what they should do? This is what I've been saying for a while. Get Big Brother back on TV because I mean it's a fucking stupid show, but at the same time, there is an opportunity right now with a bunch of very famous and unfortunately people in the mainstream media would hate to fucking think it because they still treat internet people as these obscure. Yeah, these yeah. are the people that you've never heard of before. But trust me, there's more cunts coming up to some person like you than they are Tracy Grimshaw on the street, whether they like it or not. Why isn't there a Big Brother house? With fucking mm, Angry Dad, fucking Chloe, Shani, a bunch of different fucking people. I must admit, I look at that, um, is it the Habibs or whatever? Uh, uh, the Halals? Oh, here come the Habibs. Yeah. Fuck Shani. me. I get violently ill the minute I see it. Don't ask me why. Is that a it's... racist thing? Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nothing to do no. that. It's just more that, you know, I don't know. I, it doesn't... You don't like the no, show? I think, no, it's too, you know, I just don't like it. I just don't like it. <laughs> no, I fucking don't that was, like it. That was, that was a good, good segue from I don't brother. know. You know, they have that scripted versus unscripted in terms uh-huh. of how production and all that works, etc. Fucking hell, mate. I'd rather watch Mrs. Brown's Boys. Yeah, that's not a bad show, actually. That is the funny show. I didn't show know it was a fucking... Um, I didn't know it was a... Funny show I've ever seen. Dude, until... Yeah, 100%. It is, funny show it? I've ever fucking seen. Yeah. Well, okay, so... Um, I mean, we may as well talk about this before we, we start to wrap it up, but... Um, my first experience with you was with uh, the boys that had me come down and I don't know what I was exactly 
doing it. I might have just come down for. Yeah, I, don't worry, I remember. And okay. you know, we have so many people come through this house. I typically never no, ask no. questions. Who I don't the even fuck think are they? Whatever. I go, who hey, I was, going, like... Josh, who? Yeah, go, Josh. Hey, going. I didn't know that you're a fucking comedian. You know, they told the you. They told you that I was some bloke they played footy with, and you <laughs> exactly believed it. Right, they did what too. the fuck are you thinking? Did you not look at me in that instance and go, "This cunt nah, doesn't play footy"? You're 26 kilos, fucking heavier, mate. You yeah, could have been yeah. a small midfielder. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I had gyno at the same time. I had bitch tits, so <laughs> no, so you gave him to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They took him out and fucking passed him down to you. But anyway, so we're here, and and i I think I'd only just come down because we'd gone oh let's let's do something let's do a collaboration and do something and we got to the very last night we hadn't done fucking jack shit we'd gone out fucking one night gone out to some nightclub or something and nothing ever happened and then on the last night it was about to fight the next morning we we're all sit, standing down here going we've got to you know we've got to do something let's do something and you we're trying to think this. of ideas and one I think it might have been Dylan looks at us and go let's get him because I was staying in Mitchell's room let's get Hannah into the bed with him and then we'll get Sharon to wake him up and, yeah. and say, I don't know where Hannah is. I could hear her walking out or something like that. Anyway, at this point I'm like, oh yeah, what, you know, if that's what you guys reckon will get him angry, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I don't have the ideas. Um, and anyway, we go up there and we set all the cameras up and, and whatnot and Sharon's obviously in on it. And I'm sitting there and anyway, laying in bed. The two, there was fucking um, Anthony and oh, Mitchell right, and Dylan, yeah, Stubber was here too, wasn't he? Yeah. Up in the hiding in the cupboard there because they're going. He's going to fucking, he's going to lose his shit here. By this point, now I'm starting to shit myself because I haven't realised I've gone. Oh fuck! I'm actually <laughs> <laughs> potentially vulnerable. Yeah, I, I'm potentially vulnerable. I'm in bed um, with his fucking sixteen year old daughter, and at this point, I'm also second guessing, going. Should I be even involved in, in this? <laughs> like, fuck this. This is fucking... I can fucking laugh now looking back on it. But... Oh, okay. So anyway, the moment comes. My heart's racing. I remember sitting here, sitting in bed, waiting, waiting with her. And the boys are in the cupboard there. I'm thinking, fuck, what do I say? I'm just sitting in bed waiting with Hannah, waiting for you to fucking come in. And I've looked at her and gone, so what subjects do you do at school? <laughs> <laughs> uh, got, oh, uh, and everyone just starts cracking up. And then anyway, the moment comes and I can hear you sort of come in. And I'm thinking... I remember Sharon saying, like, where's Hannah? I go, I've got no idea. She, Hannah goes, she, and Sharon goes, she's not in a bed. I said, she's got to be in a bed. Is she in the fucking toilet or something? I've got no idea. Yeah. And then, you know, again, Sharon sort of painted a picture that, hang on, no, that something doesn't appear right. Yeah. Of course, because she was in on it. So what are you thinking at this? Oh, it didn't cross my mind until, no. you know, there was some one last comment or something she made. She said, I can hear noise in Mitchell's room or something, words to that effect. And did you know I was in that room? I can't even recall whether yeah, I did yeah, or yeah. didn't, but all I remember is when I opened the fucking door, I was like a deer in headlights. Yeah. I didn't know what to actually do. Yeah, I, I know. I, 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 genuinely, it was like sort of, you, you like, I'm, is this fucking real? Yeah, that, that was the, re I, I was surprised with the reaction and that was the response I, I online. I had nothing to say because I'm thinking, holy fuck, this is Mitchell's friend. We're putting the prick up here. Yeah. He's trying to get Hannah into fucking bed. Who's in more trouble here, him or fucking Hannah? What's going on here? Like, yeah. seriously. So, yeah, you actually said the words that came out of your mouth. You could hear your heart breaking in the moment, which oh, was like, man, I, you just went, Josh, are you for real, mate? Is that, so there you go. You've got a better memory than me. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I can remember thinking, what the fuck do I say? Who, who's, who's in trouble here? Yeah. Josh or Hannah? Oh, it's well, like the old fucking schoolies thing. You know, she reckons she's going to schoolies. She can go. I'll go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going with her. Oh, that's a TV show. A TV show. Why isn't that a series? Get well, someone to sponsor actually, that. I think schoolies contacted her or something recently or... Maybe last year, but they haven't this year. She goes, no worries, but you're fucking paying for me to go as well. Yeah, and I follow her around everywhere. Yeah, that'd be that'd be fantastic. Oh, well, that really would There's be entertaining content. Schoolies. I might actually fucking finally get free t-shirt and a fucking <laughs> yeah. a, a schoolies collaboration. A thousand dollar fucking thing, and then fucking <laughs> no, DJ you know do, Tiger Lily will give get... me to fucking Hungry Jacks and say, you sit here for three days <laughs> and we'll look after Anna. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But you didn't, you didn't fucking, um, I was surprised because as we came out of it, I sat there and thought, mate, if it actually putting myself in that position, if that was me yeah, I, I, and someone came to my house and I was putting them up like that and they were in bed with my daughter, I wouldn't even second guess, mate. I would have knocked my fucking yeah, head clean it's off. it's easy to reflect, I reckon. But, you know, I think probably the fact that there was sort of no uncompromising sort of position that you were caught in probably... You know, prevented me from sort of maybe just doing a fucking body slam or something. Like yeah, that. yeah. But I, I don't know. I really, yeah. If I had my time again, maybe I don't know. I don't. No, I just think that's testament. I think if anything, it probably 
it probably broke the the character a little bit that they wanted that they wanted. I was they gutted, wanted, absolutely they wanted gutted, th- thinking, "What the fucking hell's going yeah. on here?" And I mean, she's human; it's going to happen one day. But I'm oh, I feel way. sorry for the cunt <laughs> that actually is fucking does come over. Oh, oh fuck. man, I oh, look. You know, what she, if it is like a legitimate? Has she brought, has she brought over a boyfriend at all? Nope. No, no, there's going to come a day where well, she will. Well, she's over 18, mate. So, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, she's she's an adult now. She yeah. can make her own decisions. But you're going to be fucking... You'll take Sharon's role as the fucking there'll Victorian be very police. Few, there'll be very few that get past the fucking letterbox, I'll tell you now. Yeah. There'll be very few. And it won't, won't necessarily be me. It might be Sharon or Mitchell or Dylan or whatever that sort of... You know, they do the... the What's an instant no-no? No? What's an instant fucking... Oh, shit. I don't know if I can say it, but no, no. Look, um... Mate, they're not going to survive here if they haven't got thick skin anyway. So if they can't yeah. cop a bit of shit when yeah. they walk in and they sook or sulk, then I'll throw them yeah. out anyway. No, they'll throw if, if they, if there's a, If they've got a bit of banter back, then that, that's probably going to get some immediate respect as yeah. long as it doesn't yeah. cross the fucking line. See, I like that. It's a quintessential Australian thing where it's like, you know, it is. you well, can that's take what some I, shit well, and give that, it back. That was, and again, this was just, again, reflecting on it. That's what it was like at Sharon's house when I met their parents. Yep. And I'll never forget her dad saying to me once, he goes, okay, he was a footy guy, so... Yeah. We got on really well, but he said, if you ever fucking do anything to my daughter, look out. You know, so he gave yeah. you that look yeah. and you knew where you stood. And, you know, he... Fucking... Having a bit of banter at the same time. Like, they're, they're being serious, but they're also... Yeah, oh, we had a great relationship yeah. and he's still alive. He's suffering from dementia and all that sort of yeah. shit. But, again, yeah, we had mutual respect. We knew where the boundaries were. Yeah. And, yep, a couple of times, probably as a young, immature, foolish Boy, I crossed him a couple of times, but he yep. let me know about him. Yep. Like in no uncertain terms. Yep. And that, again, I just respected him more. So I'll yeah. be looking for that same quality in yeah. any bloke Hannah yep. has. Um, and if he hasn't got it, well then... So they're allowed to fuck up. They're allowed to have a, a couple well, of fuck-ups. Everyone's ups. human, mate. Yeah. Everyone's fucking yeah. human. You know, tell you deal with the fuck-ups. Because, yep. you know what, I sit here and I've made more fuck-ups than anyone, let yep. me tell you. Yep. Um, you know, it's a cliche, but that's how you learn from it. Well, I'm here to tell you now that me and Hannah are actually dating. <laughs> <laughs> and this was me just trying to get your receipt. <laughs> um, oh, welcome to the fucking family, Josh. Do you know what I like about you? What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, fuck nah, face. It will be interesting whenever she actually does. And, and she'll tell Sharon before she fucking tells me anyway. Oh, yeah. So Who's breaking the news? Sharon will have to break the news, will she? Or oh, will it be if, a surprise? If, if, I reckon if there's something about the person that... I need to be prepared yeah, for uh-huh. Sharon will just fucking drip feed it out a bit yeah. just to sort of see what yeah. reaction is and then, then it'll be fucking bang. Bang. It'll all be happening. It's all be happening. Yeah. But I've got to, I've got to respect. You know, she's, has she ever had, a, ever had a boyfriend? No. Can you fucking believe it? 18 and a bit wow. and hasn't. She focuses yeah. on a sport and a school, mate. She's yeah. been good, unlike the two shitheads. What do you reckon she'll do? Travel next year. She's going to travel? 100%. She yep. finishes school this year, so yep. no more school fees. Yep. I'm so fucking happy. Yeah, fucking nice. And then she's going to travel next year. Great. So yep. Sharon's issue with that is she goes to Europe and finds a bloke and never comes home. Oh, well, that's Which like is another potentially TV real. show. <laughs> yeah, there you she go. She doesn't want to go with her. That's AD goes leave. to Europe. Yeah. And then leave me here on the couch with chips and chocolate, and I'll be fucking... Oh, happy. yeah. Hands yeah. my tracky pants, <laughs> chips, chocolate. I won't be watching the Habibs, let me tell you. I'll be <laughs> all right, Mark, Angry Dad, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate the good chat. Um, all the Angry Dad links will be down below. Do you have a website for your wine thing, or is that up and going yet? Or no, it's is, for, is yeah, on-premise remote? direct. Okay. As in on-premise direct.com. Yep. So any pubs, clubs, bars, venues, yep. anything that's, um, you know, that consumes alcohol, wine, clearly. Yep. Yeah, go there. My give, give us a buzz. Um, I'm happy to come out and talk to and see anyone. It's yep. a national thing, so yep. get to me out of the house. Yeah, All so right. hook me up. I'll try. <laughs> Thanks right. for the plug, man. We'll talk to you last <laughs> next time. <laughs>